Hello class, it's been a while. I really missed you. This is American English File, second edition, book two, student book, part 11a. Bad losers. Well, okay, as you can probably see, today we're going to discuss sports. Now look at the pictures. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of these sports? Yeah, boxing, football, and what's the last one? Tennis. As always, I have some questions for you. First, take your time and read the questions. What's your favorite sport? Would you like to play sport for a living? Professional sports, right? Is football the world sport? All right. What's your country's national sport? Do you like it? What are blood sports and extreme sports? Do you like them? Right? For example, UFC, right? MMA. Which sport has the best fitted and most talented athletes? Why do so many people like sports? How often do you read sports news? And do you think sports stars have the best life? For example, Chris Ronaldo in football, right? And who's your favorite all-time sport star? As always, you can add your own questions. Now take your time, answer the questions, and speak with your friends. Compare your answers, exchange your ideas. It's your turn. Okay, great. Looks like we have so many athletes in the class. Good. Take care of yourself. Take care of your body and you'll have a healthy mind. Now, everyone, what sports can you see in the photos? All right, let's check them out. What is this one? Tennis. Next one, high jump. Number three, skiing. Number four, basketball. Number five, cycling. Number six, handball. And number seven, rugby. Okay, that was easy, wasn't it? Now, everyone, look at the sports in the list. This is the list. How do you pronounce them in English? Listen and check. Underline the stressed syllable. Do you know the names of any other sports in English? Okay, it's your turn. Listen. 4.55 Auto racing Baseball Basketball Boxing Cycling Golf Handball Hockey Rugby Soccer Skiing Tennis Track and field Volleyball Windsurfing Okay now, I need you to check your answers with your friends. Put your heads together. Good. All right. So, auto racing, baseball, basketball, boxing, my favorite one. Cycling, golf, handball, hockey, rugby, soccer, skiing, tennis, track and field, volleyball, windsurfing. Okay. Now, everybody look, verbs with sports. You use play for sports with a ball. For example, I play baseball at school. Baseball, football, I play football. All right? With sports ending in ING, cycling, skiing, windsurfing, etc. We usually use the verb, all right? For example, I cycle on the weekend, all right? Or I go plus sport. For example, I go cycling on the weekend. So we either use the verb, or we use go. And one more point, we use do for martial arts, yoga, Pilates, etc. For example, I do yoga twice a week. And you know what martial art is, right? For example, karate, right? Very good. Now look, play handball, play hockey, play badminton, play ping pong, right? And for the other ones, either the verb or you use it with go. 
go sailing, go riding, go climbing, go auto racing, and do, do gymnastics, do karate, do hot yoga, do Zumba, right? Easy as it gets. Well done. Okay, now that you know about sports, let's put it into use. Sports, you love them or hate them, all right? Ask and answer with a partner. Give and ask for as much information as you can. Speak as much as you can with your partner, you and your friend. All right, let's check the questions out. Do you do exercise or play any sports? Yes, what? Do you enjoy it? No, why not? Why not? Do you used to exercise or play any sports? Why did you stop? All right. Which sports do you think are the most exciting to watch? And quite the opposite. Which sports do you think are the most boring? If you ask me, I would say maybe chess, right? Are you or is anyone in your family a fan of a sports team? Which one? Do you or they watch their games? What is the most exciting sporting event you have ever seen? All right. You know the questions. Time to answer them. Are you an athlete or not? Part two. Vocabulary. Sports. Expressing movement. Put these words in the correct column. Do you know any other words connected to these sports? We have golf, soccer, tennis, track and field. All right. Take your time, do it with your partner. You can use Google to help you, all right? But use it in English, not your own language. Very good. Okay, let's check it out. Golf, bunker, hole, soccer, corner, penalty, tennis, match point, serve, and track and field, lane, lap. Well done, you did great, impressive. Now, everyone, Listen to the sports commentaries. What are the four sports? Name them. There are four sports. Let's do it. 4.56 1 Oh, that's a really long one. Oh boy, the ball has gone into the lake. And that might be the end of his hopes of winning the U.S. Open this year. Two. It's a penalty! Yes, the referee has given a penalty in the last minute of the game. This is England's big chance. The goalkeeper is waiting on his line. Here we go! Oh no, he's missed it! The ball has gone over the bar. I don't believe it! England has missed a penalty in the last minute. Three. And there's the bell for the last lap. Now they have to run around the track one more time in this 10,000 meter final. The African runners are in first, second and third positions, but the Brazilian is coming up fast in the outside lane. This is going to be a fantastic finish. Four. And it's match point for the second time. A very hard serve, but it goes into the net. Second serve. The serve is good, and that's a very hard return, but the ball has gone out. Game, set, and match. And so we have a new Wimbledon ladies champion. All right. So what are the sports? There are four sports. Tell me. Yeah, we have golf, soccer, track and field, and tennis. You guessed it right. Now, everyone, I need you to listen again and complete the sentences with one word. One word. Then match sentences one to four with pictures A to D. So, complete the sentences with one word and match the sentences one to four to the pictures a to d let's do it together 4.56 
One. Oh, that's a really long one. Oh boy, the ball has gone into the lake, and that might be the end of his hopes of winning the U.S. Open this year. Two. It's a penalty. Yes, the referee has given a penalty in the last minute of the game. This is England's big chance. The goalkeeper is waiting on his line. Here we go! Oh no, he's missed it! The ball has gone over the bar. I don't believe it. England has missed a penalty in the last minute. Three. And there's the bell for the last lap. Now they have to run around the track one more time in this 10,000 meter final. The African runners are in first, second, and third positions, but the Brazilian is coming up fast in the outside lane. This is going to be a fantastic finish. Four. And it's match point for the second time. A very hard serve, but it goes into the net. Second serve. The serve is good, and that's a very hard return, but the ball has gone out. Game, set, and match. And so we have a new Wimbledon ladies champion. Okay, very good. Now, as always, take your time, check your answers with your friends. All right, these are the answers. Number one. B, the ball has gone into the lake. Number two, C, the ball has gone over the bar, right? And number three, A, now they have to run around the track one more time. And the last one, D, that's a very hard return, but the ball has gone out. Well done, everyone. You did great. All right, you're doing great. Now, everybody expressing movement. Look at the pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, I need you to take your time and match the words and pictures. For example, look, number one, down the steps. Look, the dog is going down the steps. All right. Take your time and do it. Very good. Now, I need you to listen and check. Okay. 4.57 Expressing movement 6 Under the bridge 11 Along the street 10 Around the lake 8 Through the tunnel 4 Into the store 2 Across the road. Three. Over the bridge. Twelve. Up the steps. Seven. Past the church. Nine. Toward the lake. One. Down the steps. Five. Out of the store. Well done. Now, everyone, I have two tips for you. Look into and out of. After a verb of movement, we use either in or out or into or out of a place. For example, come in, come into my office. He ran out. He ran out of the room, right? Easy. Now, away, off and back, all right? We use a way to express movement to another place. For example, go away. And by the way, that's very rude. Don't use it. I don't want to speak to you. The man ran away when he saw the police officer. Right? So go away. We use back to express movement to the place where something or somebody was before. For example, after dinner, we went back to our hotel. Their dog ran away and never came back. Right? And the last one, we use off to express movement down or away. For example, get off the bus at the train station. 
the man ran off when he saw the police officer. Well done. You did great, everyone. Let's move on. Part 3. Grammar. Expressing movement. Everyone, complete the sentences with a verb from the list. Hit, kick, run, throw. Okay, let's do it together. In basketball, you have to throw the ball through a ring with a basket. All right, number two. In soccer, you have to kick the ball into a goal. Number three. In tennis, you have to hit the ball over a net. And the last one. In an 800 meter race, you have to run twice around the track. All right. Now look at the sentence below. Try to think of three different verbs you could put in the blank. For example, walked. The man walked along the street until he got to the corner. All right. What other verbs can we use? Let me help you. For example, ran. The man ran along the street until he got to the corner. Drove along the street. Cycled along the street. Jogged along the street. And jogging is my favorite sport. I do it every morning. If you check my Instagram, every morning I have a story where I jog and how many kilometers I jog in a day. Well done. Everyone, just listen. All right. 4.58 The man went up the steps and into the church. He drove out of the garage and along the street. I ran over the bridge and across the park. Great. So, as you can see in the pictures, for example, look, the man went up the steps and into the church. He drove out of the garage and along the street. I ran over the bridge and across the park, right? So, to express movement, use a verb of movement. For example, go, come, run, walk, etc. And a preposition or adverb of movement. Up, down, away, right? In or into, out or out of. Remember, Use into or out of plus a noun or in and out if there isn't a noun. For example, come into the living room. Come in. We went out of the house. He went out. All right, very good. Now let's practice together. All right, it's time to show me what you got. As always, I have two exercises for you. A. Circle the correct preposition. For example, I lost my cell phone signal when I went through a tunnel, right? And exercise B, complete the sentences with the correct preposition. Stop the video, take your time, do it yourself. No help from your friends, just you. This is your turn. Okay? Now, check your answers with your friends, put your heads together. Well done. All right, now let's do it together. Very good. We ran to the ocean and jumped into the water, right? Number two, if you go past the bank, you'll see the supermarket on the right. Number three, he walked along the street until he got to the park. Number four, the plane flew over the town and then landed. Number five, the dog ran toward me, but then it stopped. Number six, we biked over the bridge and into the city. Number seven, the racing cars went around the track 12 times. And number eight, the little boy suddenly ran across the road. Okay, so far so good. Exercise B. Now. Number one, as I biked under the bridge, a train went over it. Number two, come in, the doors open. Number three, this is the third floor. Go down those stairs and you'll come to the second floor. Number four, he walked into the cafe and ordered a coffee. 
Number five, I like going out on a Saturday night. Number six, he took his passport out of his bag. Number seven, the last one, I'm exhausted. I've just biked up a huge hill. Well done, everyone. Outstanding. All right, these photos again. Sarush, what are we going to do? Well, wait, let me explain. All right. You're going to look at these photos again. You know the name of the sports, right? Say what the people are doing. For example, number one, he is hitting the ball over the net, right? Okay, now put your heads together, write your sentences, and tell me what are they doing. Take your time. I'm going to wait for you, all right? Okay. Well, since I'm impatient, you're going to have to tell me. Right, number two. What's he doing? He's jumping over the bar. Okay, number three. He's skiing down the mountain. Number four. He's throwing the ball into the basket. Number five. He's cycling around the track. All right, number six. He's throwing the ball into the goal. And number seven. One player is pulling the other player down. The other player is running toward the touch line. Yeah. If there's a line that if you touch with the ball in your hand, you score a goal. Right? That's rugby, I think. Very well. Part 4. Reading and speaking. All right. What is the title? Bad losers. Okay. First, I have a question for you. When you play a sport or a game with family or friends, how do you react if you lose? Are you a good or bad loser? Are any of your family members or friends bad losers? For example, when you lose, oh, you did this, the referee did that, you know, you're a bad loser that way, all right? But if you say, okay, good on you, better chance next time, all right? Or I will exercise more and I will beat you next time. You're a good loser. All right, discuss this with your friends. Very good. Good, but we're not done yet. Read the text and answer with a name, just a name, all right? For example, which of the bad losers insulted the match official, all right? Take your time, read it. A few moments later. Great, you're back. So, who insulted the match official, of course, John McEnroe, right? Number two, who did not want to do his job after the match? John Howard. And who became very emotional when he couldn't take part? John Drummond, all right? And the next one, number four, who tried to hit somebody? Nelson Piquet. And who said sorry after the event? Luciano Guachi. Right? Very good. Now, read the text again and fill in the blanks with the prepositions in the list. Right? For example, down, in, out, out of. You can use out of twice. Past. All right? Again, this is your turn. A few minutes later. Okay. You're back again. Now, let's take some time and read it together. All right, bad losers. Now, the hardest lesson to learn in sports is how to lose with dignity, without blaming your defeat on the referees or refusing to shake hands with your opponents. Here are some famous moments when losing was just too hard. Okay, in 1981 at Wimbledon, a young John McEnroe was serving the umpire said that his serve was out, but McEnroe thought it was in. He became furious and shouted, You cannot be serious, at the umpire. He also called the umpire an incompetent fool. Ooh, naughty naughty. In 2003 track and field world championships, the 100 meter runner, John Drummond was disqualified for a false start. Drummond lay down 
on the track and began to cry. Two hours later, his coach told the journalists, he's still crying. We're making him drink water because he's becoming dehydrated. <laughs> All right. Now, the next one. In 1982, German Grand Prix Nelson Piquet was winning the race. He was trying to pass Eliseo Salazar, who was last in the race. But Salazar didn't let him go past him. And Piquet crashed into Salazar. Piquet jumped out of his car and started trying to hit and kick Salazar without much success, of course. South Korean soccer player An Jung Hwan scored the goal that sent Italy out of the 2002 World Cup when they beat them 2-1. But Jung Hwan also played for the Italian soccer club Perugia. Pardon me, I'm not very good with names. After the match, the president of the club, Luciani Gauci, announced that the player's contract would not be renewed. That gentleman will never set foot in Perugia again. Gauci said, I have no intention of paying a salary to somebody who has ruined Italian soccer. Gauci later apologized, but An Jung Hwan left the club and never went back to an Italian club. All right, he did the right thing. When England won the Rugby World Cup in 2003 by beating Australia in the last minute of the match, the, Aust the Australian Prime Minister John Howard was so angry that in the medals ceremony, he almost threw the medals at the English players. His behavior was described by a journalist as being like an unhappy five-year-old at birthday party who starts throwing toys around. All right, nice. You did great, everyone. Now, as always, we have some highlighted words. Try to guess the meaning. You can check your Google Translate, but use English definition. And now, in pairs, answer the questions. Number one, who do you think was the worst loser, right, of these bad losers? Whose behavior do you think was understandable? And do you know any famous sports people who are bad losers? Okay, and for the next part, tell me about your experience. What did you do last time when you lost a game? This is on you. And all the way to the last part. An opinion essay. Everyone, read the article once. Do you agree or disagree? All right, let's see. Now, I need you to read the article again and complete the blanks with a word or a phrase from the list. Use capital letters where necessary. All right, these are the words. For example, look, in my opinion, finally. Firstly, instead, for example, to conclude, thirdly, all right? Take your time. I'm going to wait for you. 12 seconds later. Good, you're back. Now let's read it and complete it together. There are too many sports shows on TV. Do you agree? Every time I turn on the television, I'm sure to find a sports show on one of the channels. If I change channels, there will probably be a sports show or a sports report on the other channels too. Especially on the weekend. In my opinion, there are definitely too many sports shows on TV for the following reasons. Okay, very good. Now, firstly, if you compare sports with other TV shows, sports completely dominate. The only time you can watch talk shows or game shows or soap operas is on weekday mornings or afternoons. This is not fair to people who like other kinds of TV shows. For example, dramas, political shows or documentaries. Secondly, the sports shows on TV are not only the important games. Every week, they show boring games from college and even high school divisions. Thirdly, I also believe that on the weekend, most people want to relax in front of the television. Many people, including me, don't like sports and prefer to see good movies or funny comedy shows. And finally, I think that even on news programs, there is too much information about sports. 
It is very annoying when they talk about sports for hours every day, especially when there are more important things happening in the world. To conclude, I think TV should show fewer sports shows, especially on the weekend. Instead, it should show other kinds of shows and more movies. On news programs, they should talk about important things that are happening in the world, not about sports. All right, very good. But we're not done yet. I need you to write an essay. But how? You're going to write an article called There are too many reality shows on TV. Do you agree? With a partner, decide if you agree or not. And think of three or four reasons. Write the article. Write four or five paragraphs. Paragraph one. Write an introduction. You can adapt the introduction in the model article. Say if you agree or not. Middle paragraph. Give your reasons. Begin the paragraphs with firstly, secondly, thirdly, and finally. Last paragraph. Write a conclusion. This should be a summary of what you write in the middle paragraphs. Check your article for mistakes. For example, in grammar, punctuation, and spelling. And show your article to other students in the class, your other friends. How many of your classmates agree with you? How many disagree? All right. You're going to write an essay. The first paragraph is usually the introduction. How to write an introduction? For example, you rephrase the task, right? Neutral sentence. Rephrase the task and you map the essay. For example, say if you want to agree or disagree. Middle paragraphs usually body. Main idea plus the supporting facts. You should support what you write. And the last paragraph is the conclusion, which is based on the body, the middle paragraphs. Okay? Show me what you got. And that's the episode for today. Thank you very much for watching. Everyone, if you have a question, you can comment down below and I will get back to you. And if you have ideas for my work, please let me know. Until next time, see you.